Superman comics had been as popular as ever, even in the early 60s. September of 66 came along and the Superman TV show was ready to go on the air. I mean, there was no question. This was going to be huge. Superman is unparalleled. He's one of the most known characters in the world. Hey, it's Superman. When Superman was first created in the 1930s, uh, he was very much a reaction to what was going on in the world politically at the time. There was a sense of frustration that, you know, that uh, the Nazis were running rampant across Europe, that uh, ordinary people were feeling powerless. Uh, during the 1940s, he very much became a super patriot. He very much became uh, an, a purely American symbol. I think that the phrase truth, justice, and the American way was created very much for specifically for that era of, of the war, and then it was kicked up again by the TV show in the 50s when we were very much about the race against communism. I think that in the 60s, you had an era in the US where there was a great deal of protest and a great deal of questioning of authority. I think bringing Superman in sort of reinforced the values of truth, justice, and the American way, and gave people a, a touchstone from which to feel more secure and more calm in very turbulent times. 1966, you know, a post-Jack Kennedy uh, space race era where science was very much at the forefront of American teaching and science fiction was kind of reaching a new renaissance in pop culture. It was the times. I mean, Russia was up there with Sputniks all over the place, and we were up there with nothing, as I recall. So Superman put stuff up in the air. Yeah, where he came from. A very forward-thinking time in America where we really honestly believed, as, as we did, that we could reach the moon, that we could reach the stars. And Superman's adventures took a, a science fiction turn at that point. And it was in that era that these cartoons came out, a character who came from another planet, a character who could fly off into space, and a character whose nemesis and villains of all manner came from different planets around the universe that really captured the public imagination. Traveling faster than the speed of light, Superman closes in on the Pluton astronauts. Grasping the capsule in his powerful hands, he carries it into space, beyond the pull of Earth's powerful gravity. The Silver Age started in 1956 with a character named The Flash, the fastest man alive. And they revive Hawkman and the Atom and the Justice League, which is you know, the Silver Age version of the Justice Society. I mean, that's when they really caught hold of the public consciousness. And so the Silver Age is very much a time of, in comics, a time of experimentation, a time of like wild, outlandish ideas. It's not about making the characters realistic or grim and gritty or, or you know, or, or very much, you know, urban and, and, uh, and, and, and realistic. It's about making them fantastic. People forget that when the Golden Age was over after World War II, all the superheroes completely died off. Only three managed to stay uh, with uh, no interruption in their publishing, and that's Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman. They're the only ones that completely never stopped publishing. The primary Superman artist of the era was a gentleman named Kurt Swan, whose work appeared in every Superman comic. His work appeared in the newspaper strip, and his was very much the, de the defining Superman of the era. Kurt is very much a descendant of Norman Rockwell. He's an illustrator at heart, not a cartoonist. And he drew people remarkably well, very detailed expressions, very detailed musculature. The way he drew the S curl, it's, uh, you know, the, mostly the way he drew Clark in profile with his glasses. It's. Uh, there's a lot of it there. A lot of it extends more to the supporting cast. Uh, Lois with her perennial pillbox hat, which, you know, best dress reporter in Metropolis easily. But that's a very much a, a Kurt Swan touch. The comics were huge, and what was happening there was uh, there was an editor named Mort Weisinger who was responsible for Superman during the 50s and 60s. Mort Weisinger was one of the early science fiction fans, one of the early science fiction agents, an early pulp editor, who migrated into working in comics as an editor in the early 1940s and was at DC for the next 30 years, most of that time editing the Superman titles. 
he had really taken control of Superman's destiny by about 1950. His job was to take his writers and expand the Superman universe into all new areas, come up with new interesting ideas like the Arctic Fortress of Solitude or his cousin Supergirl or his, his super dog or, or you know different colors of kryptonite that might have different effects on him. And so every six months or so, there was always some new element of Superman that was introduced into, into the comics. So Mort populated the feature with a, just a richness of idea. He worked with the writers, very irascible editor according to all legends, but got his writers to do incredibly fertile work. And it became a universe of ideas and a mythology around the character that served very well for years and years to come.